All right, a quick review of solving quadratic equations and a quick review of factoring. I have on this page listed two of the, well, the most common factoring method for when the leading coefficient of a quadratic is not one, um, which is the AC method. And then my favorite method, which is the bottoms up method. It's wild that the bottoms up method works, um, but it does, and that's my favorite. So um, I've given a quick review of these here. This is Math 127 at this point, so I'm not going to go into a bunch of details um, explaining the steps that are happening. Um, with the bottoms up method, I will explain a few things here because it is a lesser known method. Very interesting. Um, so you have this quadratic here. And because of, let's call it witchcraft, since it is almost Halloween as of this recording, um, let's say because of witchcraft, um, you can do this special thing where you solve a different a quadratic, you factor a different quadratic, but then you can alter it to make it back into the original quadratic. So the idea is you take this number out in front here, the, two, the A value, and you multiply it by the C value. So 2 times negative 5 would be negative 10. And then you, you disappear that 2, so notice there's no 2 up here. And then you take that negative 10, boom. So you multiply 2 and negative 5, get rid of this 2. This becomes whatever 2 times negative 5 is. So you end up with x squared minus 9x minus 10. Factor this thing the way you normally would, which is, you know, looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 10 and add to uh, negative 9. And you say, ah, oh, well, those two numbers would be negative 10 and 1. Negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9. Negative 10 times 1 is negative 10. Um, and then, you know, there it is factored, right? There's the negative 10 and the 1. Um, once you have factored this random new quadratic that you've made, you then take each of these terms that you, you, you know, you found those numbers up here, divide them by whatever number you disappeared up here. So this 2 is what's being divided. Then you simplify the fraction. So 10 divided by 2 becomes 5. 1 half can't be simplified any further. And then any denominators that are left over get brought back up. And boom, so this 2 comes up here, and then it's just a 1 here. This is the correct factoring. If we boil this thing out, we'd have 2x squared plus x minus 10x minus 5, which is 2x squared minus 9x minus 5, the original, boom, the original equation. And it, it's wild that this works. Um, it's required that this thing has no GCF in it, so any GCFs have to be factored out before you begin. I've gone through and tried to um, work through the proof of this. Actually, my husband and I sat down, both my husband, we sat down for an entire afternoon and worked through the proof of this. And it's wild because it doesn't exist on the internet as far as we could find. We had to work through it ourselves. Uh, crazy that this that it works. Anyway, that's beyond it. Let's talk about solving equations. These aren't equations. This right here was just factoring. An equation requires an equal sign and it requires us talking about the zero product rule. The zero product rule is something that you probably intuitively already know. If you take two things and you multiply them together and the answer is zero, then one or both of these things have to be zero because the only way you can multiply to zero is if one of the numbers itself is zero. That's all the zero product rule says. Here it is a little bit more mathy, but it just really says if two things multiply together to be zero, one or both must be zero. Um, how this works with factor with uh, quadratics is you factor it and now you have something times another something equal to zero. So you can take and set each of these factors equal to zero. So we take x minus 5 equal to zero. We take 2x plus 1, set it equal to zero, and then solve these little mini equations. And those are your solutions to this original up here. And indeed, if you plugged in 5 to this original equation, if you did 2 times see, 2 times 5 squared minus 9 times 5 minus, minus 5. Um, if you simplify this, so 25 times 2 is 50 minus 45 minus 5, that is indeed 0. So plugging in 5 does give you 0, and plugging in negative 1 half would too. Now, I want to just quickly 
run through a few, run through solving really, really basic linear equations so that you have this mental math inside of your head. I want you to be able to solve things like 2x plus 1 equals 0 without doing any additional math. I want you to be able to go just like I did here from one step to the next without saying minus 1, then divide by 2. I don't want you to have to write out multiple steps here. I want you to have that ability to do it quickly. So I want to just do a few of these over here. Um, the first one, I'm going to write down the steps just so that we're visualizing it. And then for the next ones, I won't. So typically, the way you would solve something like this, you would, you know, subtract five on both sides. And then you'd get 3x is equal to negative five, right? And then you would divide both sides by three. And you'd say, ah, x is equal to negative five thirds. And that would be your answer. And, uh, that you know, that's great. But this is a lot more work than all of that is really unnecessary. Um, in your head, you, you should be able to move whatever this is over. So you're making it the opposite sign and then dividing by whatever's in front of the x. And I want you to be able to do that mentally. I'm going to write down a couple of these here. Um, 7x minus 4 equals 0. 9x plus 2 equals 0. 12x plus 9 equals 0. And... 13x minus 11 equals zero. So real quickly, pause the video, solve them real quick. I am about to solve them now. You are having your chance to pause. All right, let's do it. Um, so this guy over here would become x is equal to four over seven. This one, x is equal to negative two divided by nine. Here, x is equal to negative 9 divided by 12, but that can be simplified a little further. So that becomes negative 3 divided by 4. And over here, x is equal to 11 divided by 13. And those are those solutions. Boom, boom, boom. Some really messy highlighting here. Excellent. OK. So now let's actually solve some quadratic equations. Because you're going to be solving things just like this once it gets down into these two linear factors. All right, I'm going to go through the entire factoring process. When I did this in class with my students, I didn't fully write out the process of factoring because um, there's not as much time in class, but this is a video. You can skip forward through it if you don't want to see it. Um, but you're here, so you probably do. Let's go ahead. Um, we are going to factor this guy. Um, it's really important that one side is zero. So the zero product rule only works with the number zero. There is no other type of product rule, just zero product rule. Um, so one side is zero. There's no GCF to factor out here. So I'm just going to start factoring. Um, I am going to be taking this three, multiplying it by the negative 40. I'm doing the bottoms up method. So I will come do this over here. X squared plus 19X, and then three times negative 40 is negative 120. I'm looking for, okay. I changed my pens around. I have to get used to this. I am looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 120 that add to 19. And let me tell you, when I did this for the first time, I sat down with my calculator and I just started dividing because all of the obvious factors don't work. Um, what ends up working is 24 and negative 5. So I'll do negative 5 times 24, negative 5 times 24. So this factors then into x minus 5 times x plus 24. Then the number that I had gotten rid of originally, right, that was supposed to go here was a 3. And I'm going to divide all of these guys by 3. and x minus 5 thirds doesn't simplify. 24 over 3 is 8. Last thing to do is bring the bottom up. So this whole thing factors into 3x minus 5 times x plus 8 equal to 0. We'll take each of the factors. We'll take each of the factors and we'll set them equal to 0. So this becomes 3x minus 5 equals 0. So x is equal to 5 thirds. 
this guy over here. Maybe I'll use pink on this one. This guy over here. X plus 8 equals 0. X is equal to negative 8. Those are your two answers. You get X equals 5 thirds. X equals negative 8. Beautiful. All right, let's do more. 8x squared plus 2x is equal to 3. So on this guy here, we um, we need one side to be 0 first. So we are moving that 3 over. When I do that, I get 8x squared plus 2x minus 3 equal to 0. I'm creating a new quadratic that just will magically help us factor, um, where I multiply 8 and negative 3 together. I get, get rid of the 8 x squared plus 2x minus 24. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 24. Right? Multiply to negative 24 that add to 2, that add to 2. Those two numbers are going to be negative 4 and 6. This thing factors into x minus 4, x plus 6. I take the number that I had gotten rid of originally, which was 8, and I'm dividing both of these factors, or both of those uh, constants, by 8. I get x minus 1 half, x plus 3 over 4, and then I'm bringing those bottoms up. So I simplify the fractions and then I bring the bottoms up. That gives me 2x minus 1 times 4x plus 3 equal to 0. So I use the factoring that after bringing the bottoms up. And then set each of those factors equal to 0. So you have 2x minus 1 equals 0 x is equal to 1 half. Here, 4x plus 3 is equal to 0. So x is equal to negative 3 fourths. And those are your two answers. You have 1 half and negative 3 fourths. Okay. And now this very last one x plus 5 quantity squared is equal to 4. There's a really, there, there's a few things students will do here to get answers. Um, one thing students will try to like take the square root on both sides and then say x plus 5 is equal to 2. So that means that x should be equal to negative 3. And that um, isn't wrong. Negative 3 does work. Um, but it is lacking in, um, it is lacking in all the answers. So there are two different ways to solve this type of problem. Um, we need, if we wanna do the whole like set a factor equal to zero thing, one side of these needs to be zero. So one way we could tackle this problem, we could do x plus five times x plus five, that's what it means to be squared, right? Multiplied by itself. I could foil that out. Once you foil it, you'll have x squared plus 10x plus 25 is equal to 4. I would subtract the 4 on both sides. x squared plus 10x plus 21 is equal to, not 4, but 0. This would factor into x, uh, x plus 7 times x plus 3. And this guy would give me negative seven when I set it equal to zero. This one would give me negative three when set equal to zero. And indeed, those are the two answers. You get the answers negative seven and negative three. Um, I'm gonna save a little room for myself to do it another way. But that, so that's, that's the first way. Um, then another way we could do this, um, we could do the square root, we just have to be really careful. So when you have something like x squared is equal to a number, 
if you go to solve that equation, you take the square root on both sides, right? If you take, because if you take the square root of x squared, it kind of undoes itself, not all the way, but it mostly undoes itself. Um, you end up with a plus or minus. The square root is going to be plus or minus the square root of that number. So for instance, if you think about something like x squared is equal to 25, um, it is true if you take the square root on both sides, right? x is equal to 5, because if you plug 5 in there, it does work. But not just 5, right? 5 squared is 25, but negative 5 squared is also 25, because negative 5 times negative 5 is a positive 25. So there are two answers there. There's a positive answer and there's a negative answer. So this is what that plus or minus does. So what I can do, I can say x plus 5 quantity squared is equal to 4. And I can take that square root on both sides, x plus 5 quantity squared. I just need to remember to put a plus or minus in. when I'm doing this. The square root and the square cancel and you just have x plus five. So x plus five is equal to plus or minus the square root of four is two. This breaks into two equations. The first equation is gonna be x plus five equals positive two. Positive two. So subtract five on both sides. x is equal to negative three, which is the same one we got here. Right. And then on the other hand, we also have the negative. And if we come over here, x plus 5 equals negative 2. Subtract 5 on both sides, you get negative 7. Either way, you're getting x equals negative 3 and negative 7 as your answer. This is, by the way, known as the square root property, and we will talk about it again in a later video. Um, in this particular section. We'll be going back over that, uh, that, that rule. All right, um, so that's it for just a quick review of factoring. I hope it's useful and um, I will see you in the next video. We'll get back to trig, bye.